still glory to Dios. Thank you, Abhi Nazda, for your very kind introduction. And uh, after, uh, after a very nice presentation by Sita about these survivors, I'm going to talk now about observing minority. <coughs> now, I'm not going to take this presentation a little bit farther. We are not going to present in the old style that we normally do. Uh, but we will move ahead and present it in a, in a, in a, in a slightly different way. So, you know, those who have come from, from outside Jakarta, this is the city where Swami Vivekananda was born and raised. And uh, I always start my presentations with a little bit of thought from him. We are what are thoughts and made us, so take care about what you think, what the secondary thoughts say, and they carry on. And that's why people like Dr. Dutul and the others have come here from all the way from Hyderabad uh, to Calcutta just to spread and uh, learn new things and exchange of thoughts. Uh, so we know that there is an increasing incidence of hyperglycemic pregnancy over the years. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as Dr. Sita mentioned, that it is almost a silent epidemic now. It's a cause of significant impact on healthcare resources. So when a woman with diabetes comes to a clinic or to a hospital or or any family who has got a diabetic mom, diabetic could be mother, um, you know that has got a significant impact on their healthcare resources of the family as well and to the country as as a whole. And there's an increased incidence in Asian population as. We heard today morning all the diabetes were talking about that South Asia has where it is born, South Asian people are born with a unique gene. When I was in India, if you know, everybody used to, um, uh, you know, the Caucasian ladies would never be screened for diabetes. But if you were of South Asian origin, whether you were born in India, Pakistan, or Bangladesh, you would have always have to have a GD, GD, and screen that. GDT done. So that is not uh, what happens. We are born with a unique gene of diabetes. And it's an unfortunate is with us for for here to stay. So what are the challenges in pregnancy? Pregnancy, uh, as Dr. Sita was mentioning, our our talks are overlapping, but I think uh, this is very important that the message gets through. That pregnancy, especially in the late the last trimester, is a state of physiological insulin resistance and relative glucose intolerance. So even if we try and control and increase the doses of insulin, you will find that the patient is becoming more and more hyperglycemic and you are unable to control even with the huge amounts of insulin. And that is when we need to take a decision and deliver her. In the first trimester, insulin sensitivity increases, but in the second and trimester, the trimester there is progressive insulin resistance. Results in, results in increased insulin requirement in diabetic patients already on insulin and glucose intolerance in normal pregnant women. Renal threat due to the threshold falls during pregnancy, resulting in glycosuria in some pregnant patients, women, and early breakdown of triglycerides may result in ketoacidosis, especially in the third trimester. So, diabetes in pregnancy, as we know, classically is divided this way, as I, I think today morning Dr. Sunil Gupta showed this slide, is divided into two types pre existing diabetes and gestational diabetes. Pre existing diabetes can be divided into type 1 and type 2, and gestational diabetes, where there is worse pre existing, existing diabetes, now she has become pregnant, and the true GDM, where this lady previously was non diabetic. But after pregnancy, suddenly develops diabetes, which is true GDA. So I'll go through one of these cases here. So a 32 year two year old IT consultant, moral hypoglycemics, comes to you for preconceptional advice. We were talking about preconceptional advice just a few, a few moments before. She is a heavy smoker, which she blames on her work-related stress. Yes. So she enjoy, enjoys a few glasses of wine during her weekends. Her BMI is 32, and she has ongoing issues with PCOS. She officially forgets to take her oral hypoglycemics and is due to see an ophthalmologist for thyroid eyes. What will be your advice? Now, this is a classical uh, chamber patient that we get, you know, myself and Amit will get in New Town. Yeah, that is, this, these are the type of patients that come to us, anti professional, has an hectic lifestyle, and uh, too much into her work, has very little time for her own. For her. So, what will be your advice? So, uh, in a pre-pregnancy counseling, we should be talking about single most important factor for a successful pregnancy outcome is good control of diabetes and low HbA1c level. So how low will that be? That is one of the things that we need to know. 
how low we can is it be 4.5 will it be 5.5 or is, is 6.5 good enough that is something we have to we have to really counsel the patient about and folic acid at 5 mg per day to continue up to 12 weeks of gestation allows for increased optimization for diabetes control prior to conception as well as assessment of the patient's severity of complications such as hypertension, nephropathy and retinopathy and proliferative retinopathy is prevalent if the patient already has come with proliferative or proliferative retinopathy needs to be treated prior to conception because we know that proliferative retinopathy will worsen during pregnancy. So this is what um, what, what happens during uh, control uh, diabetes during these stages increase the risk of major congenital malformations. Uh, so as I as you can see, the main time time is the red. You can see the red uh, bar where there is age of embryo in risk, and you can see that uh, that is where the, where the main organs of the fetus are being are being created. And mm -hmm. what happens is that they all kinds of action of their movement, and they have to keep the patient in high blood sugar, and they have to be in high blood sugar. The lady was argument is that this year having a PCT at 2060 and the result that was in last year, 99 years of year, and the post pandemic last year was 168 years of year. How will you have been monitor her from now and how will you manage her pregnancy? Now, Dr. Sita was just mentioning on the hypostatic, and I just go through this again. The hypoglycemia and adverse pregnancy outcomes that is showed a continuum of risk for adverse pregnancy outcomes related to increasing maternal glucose levels without an obvious cutoff or trigger for the emphasis of GDM. And International Association of Diabetes and Pregnancy Study Groups developed a consensus criteria of the diagnosis of GDM using the universal screening based on the glucose level at which all of the work with regular magnetic center or CPTPT, CPTI, greater than 98 percent time, and percent body fat greater than 98 percent time, which 1.75 times the odds of this outcomes and mean glucose bias with the apple study. And IADPSG, which is more relevant in a clinical study, I can forget the apple study for the time being, because it is more very, very critical. Uh, for us, it is uh, the value of 75 gram per OGTT for the diagnosis of GTM, GTM. Uh, fasting is uh, as about 92, 1 hour 180, and 2 hours 153. So that was one of the things that we need to uh, just uh, remember. And how many may, may, may manage this type of patients who have come to you late in pregnancy with both parents diabetes? Lifestyle modification, lifestyle changes. We need to control our diet at 1600 to 1800 kilocalories per day. We need to continue this for the next two weeks. Either metformin and penalty will be a drug of choice for her. And of course, insulin therapy, rapid acting in the rapid acting insulin, four times daily will measure bolus insulin regime, which adjustment according to people's family rather than three more glucose readings gives improved glycemic control and improved outcomes where compared to two times daily based insulin adjustment based on three more glucose levels. And how we go to the manager with regular blood pressure checks and urine analysis, regular growth scanning, as Dr. Sita mentioned, assessment for the mood of delivery, whether we are delivered at a town or delivered way or delivered pre town, and yesterday when we did the operation, I was mentioning the in the maybe the operation ceremony, and lots of diabetic pregnancies have, you know, take to deliver earlier than they should be. And there is a risk of iatrogenic prematurity as we call it. And trans delivery, vaginal delivery, even common the job put them on. So, there are three types of delivery we can talk about here. There is a planned vaginal delivery that means the traction of labor, or planned cesarean section, or brain for spontaneous onset of labor and then deliver. So, what complications do you expect and what will be your counsel? So, what are the complications basically? So, vaginal complications in the day to day. That the diabetes will be increased in the insulin requirements, hypoglycemia and infection to the acidosis, deterioration in retinopathy, increased proteinuria and immunotic status for the retinal nerves, and unexplained shoulder dystocia. So, this will will have unexplained shoulder dystocia even if they have a normal 
And clearly, I wish you an upcourt very quickly of uh, civilian sexual The other uh, thing that can happen with the fetus is the cardiac abnormality that we know about, uh, mainly cardiac, increased neonatal, increased pregnancy mortality, macrosomia, which is a dangerous complication. PPT? Late stillbirth, preterm delivery, partly at that condition, neonatal hypoglycemia, polycythemia, joint risk, and respiratory distress in the so this really goes into the other continuous care for the seven weeks, they have a complex size baby, and this progressing well as the is normal with some early inspiration. See so now 25 minutes of rapid acting insulin baby. How will you monitor and manage that blood to go there and think that it's important? This is basically for the diabetic people, but it is often possible to manage the insulin to the two women without insulin in delivery, especially on top those on small doses, which is less than 20 units per day. This is because women do not eat much during labor. Those are larger doses of insulin are managed as in the pre existing diabetes with IV based dose and insulin sliding scale. And this should be discovered as soon as the placenta is delivered. And especially in GPM, we know that uh, once the placenta is delivered, once the delivery occurs, uh, we don't have to monitor the baby for blood glucose. Some of us we do it for one day at the max. But after that, we will stop doing our CVGs because we know that TDM will get cured immediately after the day. So this baby gave us a lovely girl without any incident. How do you manage her in the postpartum period? So nice recommends a fasting blood glucose level within 16 to 30 weeks of gestation. Yearly blood glucose measurements again. Chance of recurrence in subsequent pregnancy. So we have to consider that this baby does have a chance of recurrence in subsequent pregnancy. And we have to uh, give a good contraceptive counseling and need for preconception counseling in subsequent pregnancies. So this is, these are the three or four things that we should really mention when we are discharging baby this baby over. So I quickly go through this, go through this case three before we uh, conclude. Uh, so 32 years, regular to prior one, previous injury and section six years back, according to her sugar level was more than high at her six weeks. And the doctor said there was nothing much to worry about. She was subject to a subsequently diagnosed as type TTM and was a molar metformin therapy, which she used to get irregularly. She is currently continuing treatment and the scan which shows a large for gestational age or as we have mentioned, fetal macrosomia. How will you consider? So we need to consider regarding the regarding money for dietary modifications, lifestyle modifications. We have, to, we have to emphasize the effects of pregnancy on diabetes and the effects of diabetes on pregnancy and the strict adherence to a low sugar, low fat, high fiber diet is important in pregnancy as this will be transmitting control, starvation and severe caloric restrictions should be avoided because of risk of acidosis. So what investigations will be interest? Will you do a GTP? Is there any role of HbA1c and how will you manage your liver? Will you manage your high or high density or higher zero time goals? If there is maybe presence in the first time as well, what will be your approach? What will your strategy of glycemic control control and what will be the plan for the ANC? And all the gaming and viability standards recommended is she comes in the first trimester. Those who have still achieved the offer to all women with diabetes because of their risk of pre-exertion. Because of the increased risk of congenital abnormalities, women with diabetes should be offered new color counselors and CCIs at the end of the judging weeks. A pre-exertion screen with a good case service is available with a detailed after some scan of the figures at 18 to 20 weeks. And people like me and obstetricians Many of the obstetricians who are put an equal to the three weeks, and of course, you will indicate that good status. I will not go through this uh, thing, but uh, in this, uh, this, this case, but um, I'll just uh, let you, you know, we will uh, we'll go apart by some take home messages. Pre pregnancy hyperglycemia, they have some points to remember, insulin required as increased during pregnancy, or the hypoglycemics. That can form in a little provide ready use, thyroid surgery problems and need to control inhibitors must avoid us based avoided in pregnancy, retinopathy may deteriorate during pregnancy, and usually have a great risk of increase of preeclampsia and should be offered to those as well. New methods and parental mortality and mortality are increased in infants of diabetic mothers, complications related to the of maternal hyperglycemia, 
fetal hyperinsulinemia and macrosomia and we increase the type diabetic control. And that is why you come in and say the diabetic physicians and the diabetologists. Getting a treatment with diabetes should be managed in joint pregnancy with diabetic clinics by both obstetricians and physicians with expertise in care of such women. And the most important, so there should be a specialist diabetologist also dealing with pregnancy with diabetes and not with all the diabetes. Should be especially a group of diabetes and like pregnancy study to deal with pregnancies with diabetes. The most important goal of managing is to achieve maternal near normal glycemia. Outcome is improved if four times daily basal bolus regimes of insulin or insulin pumps are used and target blood glucose levels are based on post prandial or CBT as we call it, glucose estimations. And women with diabetes, especially with those with nephropathy and hypertension, may increase survival. Uh, that is where uh, imaging people are fitted with like Dr. Sita Kaunin, and they can do the self surveillance for us and they are exactly better to get it. So, take home messages of specific care for women with diabetes. I have a hundred letters. 90 years since the response of the PCU in 1932, obesity with type 2 diabetes has reached epidemic proportions, resulting in ever increasing numbers of women with diabetes in pregnancy. The gradient of risk may not, I may not have the obvious trigger with a continuum of risk extending down into the new glycemic phase and minimizing the risk of continuum and formation and first time as a spontaneous abortion required only good control, not a very tight control, while minimizing the risk for near term fetal demise, of which we are really worried about. Excessive fetal growth and period material will likely require nearly perfect control of the disease. So thank you very much.